Good morning. So welcome to the first day of Tick 80. If you go to tick80.com, there is kind of a nice overview of all the features. Not all the features. But there's kind of a nice overview of the code editor and some of the things you can do, what it looks like. The sprite editor, where you can make sprites and tiles for your map. And then the map editor, where you set up what your background looks like. Sound effect editor. And then the music editor. So all of that's built in. But really what I want to do right now is sign in and go to create. So let's do sign in first. Um, I've already created an account so it remembers me, but for you, you want to scroll down and create an account. I recommend using your school username and an email that you can check. It could be your school email or a personal email. And then choose a good password, click I'm not a robot, and then you're going to scroll down and create an account. Once you've done this, I want you to go back to Canvas and find our um, the assignment where you chose either Godot or Tick80 and add a comment with your username and your email. You could even put your password if you would like. Um, and that's just so um, down the road, if, it, if the computer's been remembering for you and then something happens and you forget what username or email you used, it'll be there for us. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click sign in, enter my username and password, I have my computer numbering it for me, and then sign in. So on this landing page, you can create an avatar if you would like, um, and then we're just going to go straight to create. And that says click to start. And it comes up with uh, type help for help. So if you type help in this console window, this is called the console, um, it has a list of commands that you can use. And we won't be using, some, some of these we won't be using very much, but the ones that you'll be using the most are load, save, and run. So load is if you have a file and you want to open that file, that's how you do that. Save, save the file, and then run will actually run the code so that you can see what it does. Sometimes you might use ls. So for example, if I do ls right now, I've been working on some tutorials and so I have some files in there. If you did ls, you probably wouldn't see anything yet. Okay, and then up here it says press escape to enter UI mode. And that is, so escape is the key on the upper left hand corner of your keyboard. And the UI is just user interface, so it's this window where we can see the code editor, sprite editor, map editor, sound effect editor, music editor, so all those things. Um, in the code editor, if we haven't written any code yet, it will have some sample code in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete everything. You do this too, please. See everything except the tick function. The tick function is our game loop. It's where we put the code um, Kind of like our main game code and this function is called or run 60 times every second so it's doing stuff doing stuff doing stuff really fast and that's how we get um, what looks like action on our in our game okay so up here we have some comments this is like in snap when we had the little post-it thing where we could um, label things similar idea just in text so i like to um, put the title of my code the same as what I'm going to save it as. So we're going to save this as lesson one. So I'm going to put lesson one there. Game developer is you. So put your name there. Um, we will put variables and printing here. That's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. And then I just leave this script um, Lua comment. Lua is just the language that we're using to write the code right now. Um, and 
you can Google it if you want more information about that coding language. Um, Lua stands for moon in Portuguese, actually. Okay, inside our tick function, let's print the classic hello world. Um, I'm going to enclose my text in double quotes, and then whatever I print needs to be inside these parentheses. So all functions have parentheses, and sometimes when you call a function, you can put inputs. So this is like when we made custom blocks in Snap, and we could have those little um, square input things. That's the same as these parentheses. That's like an input. Okay, so I'm going to hit escape again, and I am going to run my code. It looks like nothing happened, but if you look really closely, you can see up here in the upper left, there is a um, hello world kind of on top of what's already on the screen. I'm going to hit escape again twice and back to my code. In tick 80, um, the, the screen doesn't clear automatically, so if we want to clear the screen, we have to tell it to clear the screen. And clearing the screen is CLS, so clear screen, with parentheses because it's a function. It's going to call some code that basically wipes out of all the um, anything that's on the screen with the same color. I'm going to hit escape again. I'm going to run again, and this time instead of typing run, because I just typed it, I can hit the up arrow and it will bring me bring the last command back. Okay, there we go. So it cleared the screen and it printed hello world. All right, so let's hit escape again twice and let's do another print statement. So not only can we print text, we can print um, numbers. Or we can do like whole numbers or decimal numbers or whatever. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit escape and run again. And it printed, but it printed all on top of each other. I'm going to hit escape again twice. And that is because um, in, this, in tick 80, you have to tell things where to go or it's just going to go to zero, zero. So print hello world automatically goes to zero, zero. Print five automatically goes to zero, zero, et cetera, et cetera. But we can add some more um, inputs into this print statement and tell it an X and a Y coordinate. So I'll keep it lined up. So zero comma and then my Y value. Um, I'm gonna do a positive number because in tick 80, zero, zero is the upper left positive x goes to the right, and positive y goes down. And this is because it's like a throwback to when we used to use typewriters, and we would start here and type, 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 and then go to the next line. So that would, would have been line one, and then you go to the next line, that's line two, and then go to the next line, that's line three. So it counts one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. Okay, so I'm going to do, I happen to know that all these letters are eight pixels high. They, if you look really carefully, you can probably count six pixels and then they leave a pixel on the top and bottom for spacing and shadow on this particular font, but also spacing. So I'm gonna do eight for my Y spacing. I'll do the same here. So comma zero, comma, and then instead of eight, I'll do 16 because I wanna space down another amount. Hit escape run it, and there we have our nicely spaced um, words. Now, what if I wanted to move everything over to the other side of the screen or indent it a little bit more? I could go through here and change zeros. I'm going to go ahead and put in zero, comma, zero here just so it's, I have something to work with when I'm changing my x values. Um, so, I could go through and just manually change everything, but in coding, we like to be lazy. And so what I'm gonna do up here, outside of the tick function, is create a variable called x. The variable is just uh, uh, like a container to hold information. So my variable x is gonna hold the information 
I'm going to say 10. And now if I put X, so when you're highlighting things, you want the red um, box to be at the end of what you've highlighted. It doesn't include the red box. Okay, so I'm going to put X here, X here, X here. And now if I escape and run, I don't know if you've noticed, it moved over a little bit. Originally, it was further over. And I'm like, well, maybe I didn't want it there. Maybe I want it at 150. And there, it's all the way over at 150. So it's a quick way to be able to change a whole bunch of things at once and control things just by changing one number. Okay, so one thing we haven't done is save. So I'm going to hit Escape. I'm going to type save and then I'm going to type the name of the file, lesson one. When I hit enter, it will save. If I change something in here, let's say I wanted to change this back to 10, um, I can hit the up arrow to save lesson one again. I'm going to hit enter and then it says, hold on, you've already saved this. Are you sure you want to save over it? Yes, I'm sure. So you can either hit enter or click with your mouse or touchpad. Okay, so now it's saved. All right, so that was variables and printing. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to talk about sprites and making them move.